you know evangelism is big on your heart, Bryce. So, so what are some tools, strategies, things you've seen happen um, in the area of evangelism specifically? Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Paul. Um, yeah, by the way, I, I feel like a lot of uh, ministries do fall for addition at the expense of multiplication of what you're saying. And, and, and for me, I'll, I'll just be honest with you guys. Um, I really care about numbers. And I know you guys, too, because to me, every number is a soul. Right. I, I know, Paul, I was just telling uh, one of my guys at breakfast this morning, which, by the way, we've been going through the new fuel in the flame and our students Ooh. are just loving it. And when I Ooh. read it, I my heart's racing going, man, here I am, 49, and I'm still just going, oh, let's go get the campus. Let's reach more Praise people. Lord. And I was telling uh, one of the guys, I, I said, uh, you know, these guys care about people. Each person is a soul. I want to reach as many as we possibly can. Mm. But the the reality is, is you can fall for addition really easily, right? In that. Mm. And so for me, evangelism is similar to discipleship. I want to reach as many as I possibly can and help students. That's really kind of how I got connected to the Navigators. They had this idea of reaching the world through discipling one person at a time and teaching them to do the same. Mm. And I thought, you know, I don't know what I think about these people, but I love that vision. It's biblical. And I want to reach as many as I can. And just the, the numbers, you know, it added up. We can reach more people if we do multiplication. And so with evangelism, um, I want to see people not just do evangelism for a year or a semester or even in college and then stop. My hope is that it's going to get into their blood and they won't stop, that they'll adjust that once they graduate. Right. And continue doing that where they live, work, play and worship and. And so, yeah, so I'd say um, probably similar things to a lot of you guys, but um, IBDs, investigative Bible discussions, those have been uh, just a, a huge encouraging thing that we do. Uh, I, I started several years ago with a heaven hell survey. I don't know if either of you guys have used that, but we're up to several thousand people who we've, um, we just go out and ask. Hey, do you think heaven exists? What's it like? Who's there? Do you think hell exists? What's it like? Who's there? And um, oh, bonus question. Would you have any interest in hearing what the Bible has to say about who goes to heaven, who goes to hell? And wow. I think maybe we're around 5,000 people we've interviewed now and over 50% at the end say, yeah, I'd be interested in hearing what the Bible has to say about heaven and hell. And so Paul, Paul uh, passed on when we were at Davis, he passed on his, uh, gospel appointment thing. And so our students just set up a gospel appointment. They share the bridge with them right there on the spot. We have a simple five verse bridge. And then they set up a gospel appointment with them after that. And mm. uh, two, two things that I ask ministries all the time is, hey, what do you wish you would uh, be stronger in? And two things I noticed that are hard to go back and put into a ministry are prayer and evangelism. So wow. Paul, you may remember when we went to UC Davis, we decided every day, for two hours, we're on campus for an hour praying, and then we follow that up with an hour with evangelism, just going out, and we we try several different things, surveys, mm -hmm. just sharing the gospel, sharing our testimony, anything I can mm -hmm. do to get those students praying, and then going out and sharing, and then when someone comes to Christ, they join us in praying and going out and sharing, so mm -hmm. in the fall, during fall launch, um, we give away a thousand t-shirts, I saw these students standing in line one day to, to get a shirt that said college. They had to sign up for a credit card. And I thought, man, we could probably give people a T-shirt and share the gospel with them. So all of our students get to share the gospel a thousand times and share their testimony. Um, and then, uh, sorry, my, my uh, partner in my office, my golden retriever, golden retriever, my lab, this one's a lab, just came in. So, uh, yeah, so... Uh, so, you know, we don't have a ton of people come to Christ at that beginning time, but our students all get to share the gospel 20, 30 times at least. Mm -hmm. And that really mm -hmm. ignites their heart as they then in their relationships and following that up uh, where, you know, in the dorms and the fraternities and the locker rooms. So, yeah, so that's that's been big. Uh, one thing we uh, have started is uh, you mentioned, Paul, I have a ministry called Nobleman and we have the female version is called New Eve. Um, you guys have heard the idea of you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, if you give them salt, they'll drink. And so what we did was we said in Nobleman, when you start the course and New Eve, you come up with two to five people who are in your salty group. And your salty group, you tell them, hey, I'm doing this course on biblical manhood or biblical womanhood. One of our assignments is to process what we're learning 
with people outside the group. Would you be up for being one of my sounding boards? Mm -hmm. And so every week we give them about five questions and they can pick from one of those and they text them or when they're hanging out with them in their fraternity or doing an ROTC drill. Hey man, last night, nobleman, the guy was asking, does God have a dog house? I, I don't think he does, but I kind of act like it. How about you? Mm, you know. Mm, and mm. so for eight weeks, they're asking these salty questions. And then they say, hey, you know that thing I've been talking to you about every week? Um, I'm going to leave my own mini version of that. I would love for you to be a part of it. And so they recruit. Uh, we tell them if you want uh, two to five in your group, you're going to need to invite 10 to 15. Right. And so they've been praying and reaching out to these folks. And then they recruit those folks and they come and they have their own little uh, mini nobleman challenge, we call it, or the New Eve Challenge group. And those have been really good in that it's helping them uh, get used to reaching out to their friends. I have a bunch of high schoolers that just met at 615 this morning at my house. They're doing the same thing. So wow. for them to get into the habit of doing that, and you actually can't finish the course if you haven't recruited and led your own nobleman mm -hmm. challenge group. So the goal is by the time you graduate, we say you can take a nobleman and plant him anywhere and come back a year later and they'll be more like him. Mm. Uh, and same with New Eve. That's not true if you haven't recruited and led your own. And so yeah. that's a real key step of helping them do that. And um, yeah, that's that's just been a been a blast. Um, and uh, I would say with with evangelism. Uh, modeling it, teaching it. The students who we uh, try to teach evangelism just through a course, some of them get it, but the ones that seem to keep doing it are the ones that had someone go with them. Yes, and then yes. especially if they came to Christ, uh, they get it. They see where it's important and we immediately yep. get them sharing the gospel. We don't wait That's until true. they know enough. We immediately, if, during that fall launch, um, we say, hey, we have these different colored T-shirts on for everybody who's, you know, here's your T-shirt. Tell you what, grab a red shirt and come back here with us. And why don't you start recruiting, too? So we immediately yes. want them to start, <laughs> you know, they have buy in and they're recruiting people also. And um, mm. during during that, to me, prayer is just a huge thing. And I, I know you, especially, Paul, have a heart for this. Um, we thought, OK, what are some counterintuitive things we need to do, especially in the fall? Um and we said, we need to pray for 40 days. And all the campus leaders wanted to do that after fall launch because we're all so busy. And we thought, man, this is the time. So we started a round the clock 40, uh, was it uh, 40 days of prayer around the clock. And we got all the ministry leaders and all the students that we just had this house where we would mm -hmm. go and we pray on campus. And man, that's just huge to be asking mm -hmm. the Lord mm -hmm. to be, uh, you know, unless the Lord builds the house, we're laboring in vain. You're out there trying to meet people. I just met a girl who is on staff at UC Davis now, who one of her friends said, hey, I, I've got this 4 a.m. slot where I'm going to pray. And she invited three non-believers, this girl, Nancy being one of them. Would you guys like to come pray with me at this slot? And she, after she goes, what was I thinking? <laughs> I just invited these girls who I know are not Christians to come join me to pray for the lost on campus. And so, <laughs> sure enough, a few hours later, they show up with her and they she realizes they don't even know what prayer is. So she shares the gospel with them. They pray together for the campus. Nancy comes to Christ. And then the next girl comes to Christ. The next girl, all of those <laughs> girls come to Christ. Now Nancy is on staff and ministering to students at UC Davis. And <laughs> man wow. it's it's not rocket surgery right you just get out there and pray and turn the gospel loose and watch the lord work